This is supposed to be a good day. Now I'm out here shooting a video that doubles as proof for an insurance claim. You guys know how there's good news, bad news? This is a good news, really, 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 really bad news. This isn't clickbait. This sucks. This fucking sucks. But let me, hey, let's just start off with the good news. The Mercedes is an AMG. I didn't even know that when I bought it. I finally have an AMG Mercedes. How fantastic is that? It's unfortunate to say the least that my good news is quite clouded by really bad news today. Uh, I guess you can kind of see it already. The delivery driver smashed my new Mercedes into my old 240Z body and killed it. The driver claims that he thought the brakes would work and that they didn't coming off of the back of the truck. The car rolled in, down, smashed into the Z, which then slid backwards and smashed into the shop, killing the garage door completely and killing the Z in the process. This is like, I'm not gonna say it's a worst nightmare, but this is such a ridiculously terrible, ridiculous thing to have happen right now. Now I say the Z is totaled because I'm seeing a couple different things. You got this whole front panel that's been crushed in and we don't have any other pieces as guides to know how much we would need to pull it out if we were gonna try and pull it out, which I don't think is even a good idea. But then we have, you know, some minor body damage over here where this hooked onto the bottom of the garage door as it was flying through it. You have this massive dent right here where it actually hit the other car inside, no bullshit. You have this huge gouge that was taken out of it from God only knows what. I suspect the other BMW frame rail. We'll inspect that in a second. But this is what actually really worries me the most is these massive gouges in the ground. One of these is when the guy pulled it back out to try and like hope it wasn't that bad, which is ridiculous. He should have left everything where it was. But it got hit really, really hard over here starts to fly backwards the inertia is going to push it backwards when one spot like that digs in what it's going to do is it's going to torque the body really hard that piece is grabbing that piece is slamming in it's going to bend it out of shape we put bracing in there but that's bracing to just try and keep it in shape just sitting here with only air screwing with it it's not meant to take an impact from a fucking mercedes coming inside the story gets even more ridiculous I gotta say, I'm glad that I own the shop and this is all my issue now and I don't have to call my landlord. The garage door is toast. It's blown off all of its hinges and obviously destroyed down there. I got in here and I was thinking, I don't remember the BMW being this far back, right? And then I realized that the car went so far into here that it smashed into the BMW. So I don't know where that gouge... I'm really curious what would have gouged the backside of the Z in this in this area like what what did that but the car definitely got to this point right here where it destroyed a sharpie on the ground definitely would have hit my plasma cutter definitely got into this zone smashed into the bmw it definitely would have hit the frame rails first so that's what i was i was looking for any type of like scratch marks or anything on the frame rail to show me if it hit there's a little bit of dust but i don't know if it hit the z or not but i think that this piece of the frame rail right here made that dent in the back of that thing right there. That's my guess, is that was that right there. Smashed into the BMW and then pushed the BMW towards the back of the shop, running it into my welder. I'm sure there's a nice little gouge in the bottom of the welder there. Taking out everything as far as parts on the other side. You know, it doesn't help that my shop is a mess, but you know, just flinging parts everywhere. And then pushing the BMW back as far as it could possibly go until it hit this back wall over here. See, that's fresh. Like, I mean, come on. If you look really closely, you can kind of see, I don't know, you might not be able to see, right about there, there's some scratch marks from where the car actually hit the wall. Right now, it's like a couple inches away, and I don't know how it got there. I kind of suspect that that guy came in here and pushed it or something, I'm not really sure, but it definitely hit that wall. And I guess I gotta move it soon to find out what all that damage is too. They might have killed my broom too. That's deep under there. I like that broom. Oh yeah, scratches all the way across here from the welder. I guess they get to buy me a new M5 bumper. So of course the towing company does have insurance, but what I'm 
really worried about is how the insurance company is going to value the 240. To me, that 240 was very, very valuable because it had like a rust-free body. So not only did we get the 240, get it delivered and get it here, didn't, you know, we bought it and took delivery of it, clean title. Then we went through the work of doing the stripping down and everything. So that's a lot of work put into it. And I have a feeling that they're going to value it as all that work gone. So that would mean all that work is lost. Not to mention the lost time for my business, like what it means for the screwed up like time frame of the build, the amount of days that I have to take off and stuff like that, which I'm sure they won't take into account, or I think they won't take into account, unless I were to get like a lawyer or something involved. What an epic pain in the ass. I'm gonna try and shift this into a positive note. I'm a positive guy and I like to live that way. So, on the positive side of things, unless that insurance company can find a Z that has no fenders, no doors, no cowl, and no dash and all that other stuff, I get duplicates of all these parts. They're gonna have to find me another car that has that. So that's kind of a plus. Hey, and on other good news, I got connected with the guys at Industry Garage and uh, they are gonna build me a sick, sick set of taillights. So I'm gonna grab these right now, throw them in the truck and we're gonna be mailing these off to Baltimore, I believe, uh, to get retrofit. Industry Garage, by the way, is the dude, Tim, behind uh, Street Bandito that is building his Z out. So yes, I've definitely seen that build. By the way, this car is still for sale. The last buyer backed out, as happens frequently, so if you're interested, email me. You want to know the crazier thing about all this? These two cars, delivered by two different companies, neither of them are supposed to be there. I asked for them to be delivered at the house driveway back there. I asked for them to be dropped off in a totally different spot. Why are delivery drivers the worst? This isn't the first time this has even happened. When I had an Aston Martin parked right there, they hit it when they delivered my 2JZ BRZ. Grrr! I wish this was salvageable so bad. I guess the only way I can imagine this thing being salvageable is if we threw the doors in there and they were all square and we threw the rear hatch in there and that was all square and it just looked like things were square and then I got a look at the bottom panel, so we could straighten that out. It would be rough as all hell. And I don't want anything on this car to be rough. I really don't. It's supposed to be going to SEMA. It is going to SEMA. It's just not gonna be this one now, which is so stupid. If that piece hit the ground so hard it went over this lip and flew through the garage door and hit my BMW in a way that it made that bad of a dent, there's no way that some of that lower part isn't damaged as well. And I mean, it's just gonna be impossible to know how much or what way it got bent or anything. There's pretty much, after seeing the gouges in the ground, I don't think there's any way that this frame, that this body, whatever you wanna call it, the shell isn't just way, way torqued out of, like out of square. The windshield was already broken, but now it's, now it's really broken in a lot of ways. Broke this way and that way too. Not too much damage to Mercedes. Oh yeah, positive note. On the positive side, there's not too much damage to, the, damage to the Mercedes. It just looks like it got pretty scratched up right here and that bumper cover was already completely gacked. So, didn't really matter. I wonder what's under this plastic. AMG. So you guys remember earlier when I was trying like desperately to be positive about the delivery driver that dropped off the Mercedes that smashed into my 240, that smashed into my garage door, that smashed into my M5. And I was like, at least the Mercedes is an AMG. At least we got an AMG. We got lucky at the auctions. <clears throat> so I couldn't find out horsepower numbers for this AMG. I was getting really excited. I popped the hood and I saw a funky looking V8 that I didn't know anything about and I couldn't find a supercharger, but I was like, maybe, maybe, you know, and I saw some AMG badging on there. There's AMG wheels, AMG stuff on the back. So if you have a Mercedes question, you text your boy Tavares. And I did, and he let me know about the AMG appearance package. Do I appear to be pissed off? There's no upside to today. It all just sucks. I was thinking one really fortunate thing is, imagine if I would have for some reason been standing around, maybe filming, maybe hanging out next to the car and the guy would have rolled over me. At least I wasn't here to watch my hopes and dreams get crushed or have my legs get crushed. So that's, that's a positive. Time for a status update. The owner of the company 
said when the wreck happened, which was when we last talked to him about two and a half hours ago or so, that he would like to handle this outside of insurance, which was, I was like, okay, if you got the cash on hand, I understand that. Uh, but then I said, then you need to come out here and see the damages uh, for yourself. And then now he's just not answering the phone because I guess he's too busy working. Pro tip, if you don't want to get sued really badly, don't piss off the guy who you just crushed a bunch of his property. Just a thought, just a thought. Anyways, uh, I have a giant hole in my shop garage door and I'm not gonna leave it like that overnight. So uh, he's replacing this no matter what. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start BS for building a barricade so people can't just crawl into my shop tonight. Hey, it's not perfect, but it'll keep the rodents out. I had to pop the springs out and take the roll, all the rollers on the sides were completely broken to smithereens. So I had to pop those out to be able to get the thing to actually like slide up to the top point. So it absolutely will not keep any human out that is really trying to get in through there, but they would have to make a lot of noise to get in through there. So I think that's the game plan is this is just one giant noisemaker at this point to keep people out of the shop. Normally I wouldn't be so chill about that, but I've got a friend that does security in the neighborhood and he swings by the shop once in a while already as it is. And uh, I give him a call and he said that he's gonna swing by and just stay part of the night over here. He does a lot of industrial stuff right across the way. So he's gonna stay the night uh, tonight uh, over here for a really reduced rate and that'll be good. I could just bill the insurance company whatever that costs me so that won't cost too much. And uh, it'll keep the shop nice and safe until I could figure out this new garage door. What a pain. So I'm definitely frustrated about the situation at this point and I wanna go home. Uh, but I'm gonna hang out here for like 20 or 30 more minutes and then, then it's off to get a beer. I don't really wanna go home. I wanna grab my girlfriend and switch this to a positive note and go just have a nice meal or something. I wanna do something better than that. All right, just got back from uh, dinner with Chelsea. That was really good. That was a nice way to like decompress. So I was thinking like, can we, can we salvage that 240? We might be able to salvage it. It might be salvageable. Cause all right, the, the straightness of the frame, as long as the doors and the hatch line up and then the fenders and the hood and the, um, what's that top thing that like kind of gutter thing? I always forget the name of it. But anyways, if that all lines up, so if everything essentially lines up, that means it like could be repaired. But I'm really worried about the amount of damage that came in at that like windshield uh, level. Where, where right where the windshield meets up with the body, that was pretty bad. And, uh, but as far as the rear part where the hatch connects down to, that's like, you know, that could be like flattened back out. I'm really bummed about the whole thing overall, but I, I, I kind of like have this weird attachment to that shell. Like I kind of have this like weird bond to it where I, I don't want it to go to waste. I don't want that to die. I don't know why it's like, it's, but it, it felt to me like, you know, we bought that before we bought the chassis and we bought that before we bought, yeah, we bought that before we bought the M5. So like that, it was like the beginning of a thing. It's like if you, it's the beginning of a baby, but then you like, nope, there's no good metaphor there. I have no idea where I was going with that. What would you do if your baby lost its skin? <laughs> Is that a good one, Chelsea? No. no? Edit that out. <laughs> Anyways, if we can square it back up, maybe I should test fit the doors or something before I call it a, a wash. I mean, I'm definitely gonna charge the insurance company for a whole new car uh, and garage door and half of an M5 or whatever, for, if I can, whatever I can get away with. But um, but if we can square it all up and make it work, like God, I would really like to make it work. I feel a weird attachment to that, that that shell, that VIN number, that thing. I feel a weird attachment to it, and I don't want to go backwards now. So we'll see. We'll see what's possible. 
Today was a legit like terrible day, but the thing to remember is in life this is going to happen multiple times and sometimes you're going to be on the receiving end of the terrible day and sometimes you're going to be like on the giving end, which feels way worse actually. So I think that the life lesson to learn from this is like you just try and carry on the best way you can, you know, and uh, try and stay positive about it. So this sucked, but we'll, we'll move on and we'll, we'll just keep it going and we'll do do whatever we got to do, you know. Uh, I, man, the last thing I heard is that driver that made this mistake isn't even answering the phone when his boss calls anymore. So I, I actually, weirdly enough, I feel really bad for him. So we'll continue on with work as planned. So I'm going to take the weekend off. I'm going to figure out how to get a new garage door like really quickly. Uh, and Eric's going to be joining me on the next legit episode where we're going to be, uh, finishing up the rear, uh, subframe. Uh, mounts and strut towers and getting all that like like with with Eric there helping me I'm 100% confident we'll get all that welded up 100% nice and pretty too and uh, and bolted up so that'll be that'll be really fun that'll be a great piece of progress in the next episode and although I'm sure a lot of you are thinking the same thing that Chelsea was take this as an excuse to run we're not gonna we're gonna do this build and we're gonna finish it it would be nice to just do some bolt-ons on a 370z and carry on with our lives like none of this ever happened but that's not what we do here i like to dream up projects that are way harder than i think i can do and somehow we'll figure it out so i will see you in the next episode a couple days from now it'll be out thank you so much thanks for all the support and uh and and everything and it means more now than ever before so thank you guys all so much uh if you want to help out and support head over to bsforbuild.com scroll down to the shop pick yourself up anything i will also be on twitch this weekend multiple times so check us out on twitch it's uh twitch.tv slash bs for build and um that's it guys appreciate you joining me and i will see you soon for the next episode peace <laughs>